everyone. It's Bob Crossan. I'm the editorial director for Wastewater Digest. I'm joined today by Chris McNeil. He is the COO at Freya Systems. And I also have Clint Swope. He is remote and systems manager for Delacora. We're going to be talking about how Delaware County Regional Water Quality Control Authority's use of artificial intelligence has improved facil the facility's automation and operations. Thank you both for being here. This is such an interesting and fascinating subject with the advent of uh, AI and kind of the, its growth and popularity with ChatGPT and other things like B Bing and Microsoft's uh, use of it too. And just hearing how AI is trying to inform things on the wastewater side sounded really fascinating to me. So I really appreciate you both taking the time to talk to me about it today. Absolutely. Sure, no problem. So I want to talk, uh, let's start first, like, could you describe from the outset, kind of like, what have you been doing with AI at uh, Delcora? What, what are what are the ways that you've been utilizing it so far? So this was a, a first AI project for us uh, when it had been introduced to uh, Freya. I've always had this idea of, you know, being in the PLC automation world of, <laughs> you know, what, what can AI do for us? Um, one of our largest expenses here uh at the authority is our aeration system so they're, they're blowers just for dissolved oxygen and you know how can we just trim a little bit of cost so um we have four or 550 horsepower blowers we don't always need the fourth blower so we kind of came up with this thought hey if we could prep knowing incoming loads because uh, we have a very dynamic load here uh truck waste industrials uh anything you can really think of so uh working with Freya uh, came up with possibilities on things that we could do, and, and it's actually uh, worked pretty well. We're uh, online with this algorithm. So the goal was to uh, kind of ramp up our, our three blowers that are online without starting this other 550 horsepower blower, if not needed. So just being able to shave that off uh, mm -hmm. should substantially reduce electrical costs. Oh, yeah. Well, and aeration takes up such a substantial portion of almost every wastewater treatment plant's electrical costs. Just the the amount that you have of air you have to push and just the energy required, it's generally one of your top three expenses, I would yeah, think, too. <laughs> exactly. So I, I thought it'd be really cool to start there and, and have an idea of kind of things we could look at and, you know, then deal, deal with Freya. We really knew that, you know, them going into not knowing anything about aeration, uh, I tell you that they're probably aeration professionals now just by the questions they were asking and and everything else so i can tell they took a deep dive into our data yeah well one of the things that i hear a lot when it comes to ai and and automation in general is just that that concern from operators of being kind of taking that step back and letting the computer control things a little bit more how, how did you get over that hump of that kind of concern was was there a trust that had to be built with the system to make that work i think initially when automation had started uh, here at delcora um, that was a fear for, for people, but uh, I try to explain to all the operators that, you know, this, this is still a process that must be manned. Nobody is going to lose their job. We're just trying to make it more efficient and easier for you. Um, I come to find that they really rely on it a lot now. So one o'clock in the morning on Christmas or a holiday is when they have an issue and they're like, help, come, you know, even though you can still run the stuff in manual, but they, they are so used to it now that they, they've adopted it well. Yeah. Well, what what have been the results of this? You, you talked about like the energy reductions and stuff like that. Have there been other use cases that you've been testing and what have been some of the results that you've seen so far? So this would be the, the first use case and the first integration with AI uh, mm -hmm. that we're using any kind of algorithms like that. Um, back on your, your security question, very concerned that we kept everything on premise. So, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Freya unfortunately can't see the performance of their algorithms unless we, you know, package the data and send it off to them. But that was, you know, the one stipulation that that we had that okay, well, we're we're doing this, but it's got to live here and can't touch the internet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, I, I say it's working very well. I think at the end of the year, I, I could probably do some analysis on costs because we had monitored it for a while, about three or four months. Uh, just trending it daily with some of our reports and said, hey, we feel comfortable enough to let this control our, our blower system. So, and uh, no no issues currently. So I have some other thoughts and, and projects I'd like to move into. We uh, do incineration here. Okay. So polymers, presses, um, I think they did a little hackathon. We sent them some video uh, clips of our, our sludge and, and polymer and thoughts that I had on how we can control our, our polymer system and presses, tensions, stuff like that just by video AI. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll That's be in the next uh, 
yeah, next stepping really, stone really there. Interesting. So, so Chris, to, on on your side of things, when it comes to uh, on your side of things, when it comes to to Freya and your integration here, what were some of the concerns maybe that you had going into it, and what were what did you want to learn through this process that that you have learned? Yeah, so uh, this was just like it's Delcor's first foray into AI. It was our first foray into wastewater treatment. Um, so what, uh, like there were two main challenges that we had. The first one is like not knowing anything about wastewater treatment at all. So <laughs> like we watched a ton of YouTube videos and like trying to understand what, what's going on. And then Clint and his team uh, answered all of our questions. So they, they spent time um, helping us like bridge that gap from like the theoretical that you learn from, from YouTube or whatever into the practical. Cause what we've learned now and, and looking at a couple of other sites is like, you can get the theory of it, but each site is like a snowflake. They're all different. They do things differently. So um, getting that practical knowledge was really important for us. So that was one of the things. And then just understanding the wealth of data, like we had never heard of a SCADA system before. So we, we were kind of shocked that it's recording. You've got hundreds of sensors. You've got logic that's being programmed into there. And, and to be able to look at that and have the algorithm learn that logic without knowing what the logic is, but seeing it from the data um, and being able to sort of filter that data and, and give it the, you know, get rid of the noise and have it focus on the, the key stuff that we're trying to solve. Um, those were the, the two biggest challenges. And I, you know, overall learning how this works, learning the, the wastewater treatment process, like, it's been pretty cool. Uh, I've, it's just, you know, uh, an interesting kind of topic and, and coming from defense and aviation, you have sensors on aircraft. I've, I've never dreamed of seeing this much data uh, for wastewater, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And there's, it's, there's a wealth of data in this. So it's, it's, it's awesome for us. Yeah. When it comes to wastewater, there, there just really is a lot of data because there's so many constituents in wastewater, uh, even, even more so than drinking water and a lot of times you have to maintain those bugs, right? Like that's the whole point. You're, you're maintaining a zoo essentially. Um, and so it's really fascinating to, to be able to use AI for this where it can understand these like and extrapolate out in way bigger scales than the human brain can possibly manage and, and understand. Is that something that you're looking at for the future when it comes to AI and use in these cases? Like where, what do you think is the boundary that you can cross with AI when it comes to wastewater treatment? For... Is that a question for me? Yeah, yeah, for you, yeah. For you Chris. <laughs> yeah, we'll start with you and then, yeah, uh, sure. and then Clint, we can ask you about kind of like what your dreams are for AI in the future. <laughs> sure. So, I mean, overall, we've, like I mentioned, we were looking into, into YouTube. We've seen a couple videos, but to be honest, this seems like a largely untapped market for, for AI. And, and there's a lot of automation already built into these plants, these systems. So you... Go, going in there and understanding that there's a ton of room for AI. And like Clint mentioned, you have sensor data, but you also, there's video data. Um, there's, there's lots of stuff that you can do with this. And then it's focusing on the plant and how you integrate into the automation system, which is really interesting because you're taking it from a predictive model and you are implementing it so that it's truly you know, artificial intelligence, it's now making decisions on how to control the plant. So this is really cool. I mean, it's as close to developing a Tesla that I'm ever going to get to. So um, it's it's pretty awesome. But I, I think it could go pretty far. I, I mean, I've we've, we've looked at different um, wastewater treatment processes, we're starting to understand that and looking into how it affects the environment. Um, you know, obviously aeration takes up a lot of energy. There's, there's a ton of things there to kind of help. Um, and you know, overall it's, it's impacting pretty much everything. It impacts the plant and impacts the people around the plant. So it's, it's really interesting. And I think there's, there's a lot that can be done here. Yeah. Well, uh, Clint, you had talked a little bit about some of the applications that you're interested in, in achieving uh, moving forward. What are the next steps for AI at Delcora? What, what are you guys trying to achieve? And like similar question to what I posed to Chris, what, where do you think the boundary lies and what's achievable with AI and wastewater? I really feel that it's, it's endless. I mean, if you can really think of, you know, how it could help you. Uh, my, my goal is, you know, I work 
and oversee the maintenance and working with operations and their needs and their struggles uh, in this 24-7, 365 operation. So, you know, what can we do to help them, which will be beneficial? So, you know, if you've ever been in a press room and you go up there and you're just smelling like press room all day, even if you're in there for a minute. So uh, making adjustments as as our sludge feeds change, the, the polymer, I think, would be a very beneficial to everybody mm-hmm. for uh, chemical usage for our incineration process. You know, if we can make that perfect cake coming off of the press and not be wasting chemical and everything else would would be another another home run. So I think uh, what I see now on our aeration with uh, energy savings, it's it's a good use case for me to say, hey, look, this is what we invested into this, the time, money, effort. This is what we've gotten out of it. Uh, I mean, as of now, it seems seems like a win for, for me and, and the company. Yeah. Well, and the more money you save, the more you have that you can put away into, into other capital investments or even sometimes yep. operational investments, which can be really yeah. useful for your, your employees too. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think there's definitely a lot more. Now, the aeration was, was my, my first thought on, hey, it's our largest electrical load anywhere throughout the authority. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way that that's performing is, is good. So it, uh, the, the algorithm, you know, to clarify, doesn't really control anything. It just gives us uh, mm-hmm. a command like, hey, I want this. So if we have AI enabled through the PLC, we have other fail safes and stuff that per se that were to not be working to take over. But mm-hmm. it's, it's been pretty on point and we, we track it and I get trends, you know, 24 hour trend. And I see when it wanted it, when it came on mm-hmm. and it's uh, pretty exciting for the end of the year. So, yeah, it gives the, you uh, the insights you need when you need them. Exactly. Yeah, we have we have data overload. So taking that data and, you know, being able to, to utilize it's very, very important for all departments here. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you both for talking with me today. This is re- really fascinating. Like I said, I think this is a really cool application of AI and reducing energy costs. I definitely agree with you both that there seems to be a very high ceiling on what can be achieved with AI and wastewater. So looking forward to seeing what you guys have on tap next. Perfect. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. And if you're interested you. in learning more about this if you're, as a viewer, you can check out our video description below. We'll have some information down there as well as some links and You can check all that. And once more to both uh, Chris and Clint, thank you both for being here. No problem. Thank you.